Hello, everyone. My name is Jason. I'm one of the H Corp residents, and I will be giving a talk today on fracture related infection management. I have no relevant disclosures to today's talk. In terms of an outline, we're just going to start by reviewing treatment principles and surgical management of fracture related infections, then go over a quick case, and then discuss some emerging technologies for fracture related infection management. So, in your previous talk, uh, you went over how to diagnose uh, fracture-related infection, what the criteria were, and um, uh, this talk really is the next step. So once you do have a diagnosis of uh, FRI, what do you do? So before we kind of get into the details, there are some overlying treatment considerations that need to be taken into account. First being uh, management of FRI really is a multidisciplinary process, and having a multidisciplinary team to the extent possible is really important to critically and effectively manage FRIs to improve patient outcomes. Uh, when managing FRIs, um, it is important to also consider uh, timing, uh, both in terms of the infection and um, uh, where the fracture is in its healing process. Uh, biofilms uh, from the offending bacteria form over the course of the first few weeks after contamination. Uh, this often overlaps with the fracture healing time frame, which uh, takes place over several months after the initial injury. The benefit for uh, FRIs relative to other major orthopedic infections, such as prosthetic joint uh, infections, is that uh, you can use suppressive antibiotics to facilitate implant retention, at least until bony union occurs, prior to removing hardware. Um, so that's a, a something to consider uh, in your toolbox as you uh, manage FRIs. Uh, and then timing of infection detection and symptom onset is also something very important to consider. Uh, infection classification is based on timing after initial fracture fixation. Uh, and the age, the, uh, age of the infection impacts management strategy and surgical approach, whether you go for an implant retention uh, strategy versus exchange or implant removal. Um, but the timing of the infection really doesn't impact the duration of antibiotic treatment overall, and we'll go over that uh, in a moment. Uh, when thinking about treatment, surgical management, um, really, uh, the goal of surgical management is to remove the dead tissue, uh, to reduce the bacterial bile burden, and also to acquire deep cultures to inform antibiotic therapy. And so, you know, your major options here are to keep the implant and to breed the uh, the tissues while maintaining the implant in place. Um, uh, that's known as debridement, antibiotics, and implant retention. And this is a strategy that's really better for early infections. Um, uh, as infections progress and biofilm develops, um, success rates tend to decrease with uh, chronic FRIs having the lowest treatment success rate around 50 to 70% with this strategy. And then the other major strategy is to uh, debride and then remove the implants or exchange, uh, ex exchange the implants and then provide antibiotic therapy. And then treatment decision really here is based on whether a proper deb debridement is, is possible or not. Uh, and so when um, debriding um, FRIs, uh, again, the, the key thing is to remove all dead tissue and then also to acquire cultures and biopsies in order to inform antibiotic therapy. Uh, debridement should uh, usually be followed by um, several uh, of these uh, uh, next treatment steps. Uh, these include fracture stabilization. Um, so this can be in the form of either an external fixator or an exchange of existing hardware. Managing the dead space um, and then providing local and uh, systemic antibiotics. And then another key element too here is uh, ensuring that there's adequate soft tissue coverage. Um, stabilization is really key, though, um, to promote bony union and to also promote infection eradication, as unstabilized fractures are, are more prone to infection uh, than, than stabilized ones. In terms, just to hear a quick note on soft tissue coverage, um, uh, really having adequate soft tissue coverage is key for fracture consolidation and infection management, as uh, with adequate coverage, you improve antibiotic delivery via revascularization, and the soft tissue coverage serves as a barrier against uh, additional infection or contamination. So taking these uh, principles into account, we just have a, a quick case here, and this is taken from McNally et al. in their article uh, in 2020. So this is a middle-aged uh, gentleman who came in in 2013 with a Gusio Anderson 3A segmental humeral shaft fracture injury film and uh, clinical photo shown there. 
the uh, case was initially managed um, uh, according uh, as, as shown here in the series of x-rays so uh, starting from the left moving to the right um, the fracture was initially managed with a plate um, as well as antibiotic eluding cement in the uh, uh, in the uh, 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 segmental defect the uh, after uh, six week or eight weeks autologous bone grafting uh, uh, occurred um, uh, and uh, subsequently 12 months uh, post-operatively uh, you can see in the middle image there that there really was no evidence of bony consolidation um, but really at the time no evidence to suggest uh, fri either the patient underwent two revisions over the course of the next three years one at one year and one at three years after the initial injury um, uh, and after the second revision, um, you can see the CT scan there on the fourth image, uh, really showing no evidence of bony union, um, and an X-ray uh, on the right there showing the same thing. Um, at this point, the patient underwent hard removal, uh, placement of an external fixator, uh, and um, uh, subsequent steps underwent um, debridement, removal of necrotic bone, and placement of antibiotic loaded cement. Cultures at this time uh, were taken, uh, which grew staph epidermidis, uh, for which the patient was then placed on systemic antibiotics. After adequate treatment of the infection, um, the surgical team underwent uh, reconstruction via free vascularized fibular graft and a double plate uh, fixation construct to create a stiff, uh, stiff contrast construct to support graft integration. Uh, and then, um, in the second image there from the left, you can see that two years after reconstruction, there was evidence to suggest that the fibular graft had integrated well, and then the CT scan showing the same thing, demonstrating bony union. Um, and, uh, and there is a clinical image uh, showing no signs of uh, obvious recurrence. So, you know, overall, um, a fairly um, prolonged treatment course here, um, you know, ranging, uh, you know, almost five years, um, from injury to bony union infection resolution, just really demonstrating how devastating these FRIs can be, and also how uh, treatment principles related to fracture fixation, antibiotic management, as well as debridement are all critically important to adequately treat these infections. Just a note on the antibiotics. Um, so antibiotic treatment really takes one of two forms, either local antibiotics or systemic antibiotics. We typically think of local antibiotics as a useful adjunct uh, with systemic antibiotics really being the mainstay of treatment. In terms of local antibiotics, these can be incorporated, for example, into antibiotic gluten cement and used for dead space management. Um, however, when using uh, antibiotics combined with cement, one thing to really know is that the thermal stability of your antibiotic is required for this to work. So typically beta-lactam antibiotics um, really, they degrade quite quickly, even at body temperature. So the heat of the uh, cement as it hardens can degrade the antibiotic significantly. So you really want to reach for a thermally stable antibiotic, and these tend to be aminoglycosides and fluoroquinolones. Uh, and then really uh, another kind of key piece of this is um, these antibiotic, this antibiotic cement usually should be taken out. Um, some evidence from the prostatic joint infection uh, literature suggests that um, up to 90% of antibiotic laden cement beads actually uh, remain culture positive, uh, and these cultures develop resistance to the antibiotics when they are um, when these these antibiotic beads are retrieved from the body. So they, they can really serve as nidises of infection. Um, so it really should be removed once the adequate elution time has been given. Um, and then in terms of systemic antibiotics. Um, Really, if you suspect an FRI, empiric antibiotics should be initiated after the culture samples are taken. And the choice here depends on local microorganism, you know, the community, uh, bacterial um, understanding, and the patient risk factors. And then once you have the organism and susceptibilities back, um, targeted antibiotic therapy should be get, uh, begun. The duration of treatment really is based on expert opinion. Um, if you are going for an implant retention model, 12 weeks of antibiotics is typically recommended. If you are removing the implant, six weeks is usually considered sufficient. And then the current recommendations for intravenous therapy are really for only for the first one to two weeks. And then the rest of the antibiotic course should be transitioned to, to oral antibiotics. In terms of current guidelines, um, regimens, um, 
for FRI management really are uh, taken from the prosthetic joint infection literature as it is a little bit more robust. Um, uh, there are some key antibiotic characteristics to keep in mind. Uh, rifampicin is um, really the treatment of choice for staphylococcal implant related infections. And the reason being is it's one of the few antibiotics that can target metabolically inactive bacteria within a biofilm. And so sometimes, it, often, bacteria within biofilms tend to downregulate their metabolisms. And many antibiotics require an active metabolism in order for them to have bacteriostatic or bactericidal effects. So rifampicin is really one of the few that can target these inactive bacteria to reduce uh, infection recurrence uh, from dormant bacteria within biofilms. Um, and rifampicin, though, if you, you are using it, therapy should be started after incisional wounds are dry to reduce superinfection risk with a resistant organism, as resistance to rifampicin um, is a serious concern and can occur rather rapidly. Um, and so usually, uh, because of this concern for resistance, rifampicin is typically given with another antibiotic to reduce that risk. Uh, for example, fluoroquinolones or linazolid, et cetera. Uh, it really doesn't have a clear role, though, for C. acnes related infections for um, you know, up, more upper extremity shoulder related infections. Um, vancomycin or glycopeptide antibiotics, these are the first line for uh, methicillin resistant Staph aureus infections. Uh, penicillin is good for streptococcal infections, ampicillin is good for enterococcal infections, and then fluoroquinolones are really mainstay for gram negative. Uh, uh, bacteria. It also has a similar anti-biofilm effect for gram negatives as rifampicin does for gram positives. So um, for that reason, it really um, uh, is, is one of the treatments of choice. Um, and again, it should be given after debridement to reduce biofilm burden and uh, limit resistance development. Uh, for pseudomonas, uh, initial treatment with an anti-pseudomonal beta-lactam antibiotic is typically recommended. This is with either uh, zosin, cefepime, ceftaz, uh, or a carbapenem. And just a quick note here on future therapies and emerging technologies. So, you know, antibiotics have been the mainstay of um, infection management, you know, since uh, World War II. Um, but nowadays, many alternative or adjunctive uh, forms of therapy are being investigated. These uh, have to do with uh, the implants themselves um, or drug-loaded materials um, and other antimicrobial uh, treatments. So ones to note here are um, uh, modifying the implant or hardware via metal ions or nanostructured uh, surface modifications of the uh, implants. Uh, providing um, uh, antibacterial, antifouling coatings, um, or uh, integrating drug-eluting materials into um, uh, standard uh, implant use, such as in cements or in uh, calcium um, um, uh, mineral adjuncts. Uh, Antibiotic-reloaded hydrogels are also something that have been uh, explored as they can be used as a biodegradable, time-released form of antibiotic delivery. Um, and then there are some other ones, uh, kind of novel agents, um, using things like immunotherapy or phage therapy, which is what I'm um, looking into, uh, to really try to eliminate the biofilms entirely uh, to um, reduce the risk of a, uh, infection uh, recurrence uh, that way. Uh, but again, a lot of these are, or most of these really are, are, are in early stages, um, and evidence, uh, further evidence is going to be needed to better understand this role uh, in FRI management. And then in terms of challenges for the field of FRI, um, really it's um, uh, kind of boils down to a need for more evidence. Um, there, there needs to be more evidence-based understanding of antibiotic prophylaxis or fracture fixation to help determine optimal regimens uh, after injury, especially in the case of open fractures. Clinical trials are also needed to compare efficacy of defined treatment regimens. Um, in order to um, help protocolize some of the treatments for FRIs. Uh, and then, you know, there are a lot of ongoing basic science studies, especially related to the novel therapies that I just mentioned. So understanding how they play a role in FRI management um, and how um, uh, some of the research into antibiotic therapy failure can be used to develop innovative therapies is going to be needed. And then surgically, um, 
improving ways to better identify necrotic tissues that can serve as infectionitis is, uh, is going to be important to help improve treatment and efficacy. So in conclusion, fracture-related infection treatment should involve multidisciplinary teams. Treatment should balance biofilm eradication with fracture healing considerations. The goal of the treatment really is the removal of dead tissue and acquisition of deep cultures to inform antibiotic therapy. Systemic antibiotics remain a mainstay of treatment and local antibiotics can be a useful adjunct. And there are emerging therapies with tremendous potential in the early stages, but more and higher quality evidence is needed to better inform FRI management. And that is it for me. Thank you so much.